I've uh, had a passion for bees since I was a little girl. The uh, story goes that when my mother was pregnant with me, she got pretty bad sick, and uh, she gave birth to me two and a half months premature. Doctors sent me home to die. My grandfather's like, well, I've got a little recipe I'm going to try. And the recipe was raw um, honey, local honey. I'm mean, supposed to give babies honey, right? Um, raw egg and milk. And here I am, born now. 30 years later. <laughs> anyway, um, but I've always had a fascination with them. Um, you know, growing up, you'll see uh, on TV, the bees are, you know, this scary group of little murderous insects that are out to get you. Um, but every time I was around bees on a bush or a tree, um, they'd land on my hand. It never stung me. There was never a problem. So I had this kind of fantasy in my head that, oh, the bees really love me. Because, <laughs> you know, I was thinking that there are these uh, aggressive creatures. And, uh, and I've learned uh, throughout my life that they're actually pretty gentle. And, um, anywho, so... My story is, a couple years ago, I noticed that bees were dying in my yard, and I knew that I wasn't using pesticides. So I started doing research. And of course, like all of you here that I've learned, um, I learned about neonicotinoids. I can argue, who in the right mind would approve something so toxic and deadly um, to all life? Um, yeah, right? <laughs> well, is this population control? What is the, the uh, thinking behind this? But I learned that at our local parks or schools, hospitals, they regularly use pesticides of all kinds. So anything that ends with the C-I-D-E is a pesticide and kills life. Whether it's an herbicide, an insecticide, adulticide, slimicide, fungicide, you know, there's a long list of them, you get the point. Well, I simply went to our local parks department and said, hey, you know, there are alternatives. You know, can I help you? Um, switch to organic land management. And of course they all looked at me like I was some crazy homeowner, you know, mom, you know, that just uh, hadn't got a clue about how to manage large pieces of land without pesticides. Um, so I did a little digging around and I found that there are other cities across the planet that are using organic land management practices. So I reached out to a few of the experts and said, hey, do you think that you can come to Reno, Nevada? That's where I'm living now. And <laughs> and uh, and uh, help our parks and rec department <laughs> um, teach them how to do something better. And they said yes. So we got 48 municipalities throughout northern Nevada to come to the city uh, of Reno Reno Hall offices or chambers and more, uh, learn organic land management. So I'm just still pinching myself a year later. Can't believe it. It actually happens. So that motivated me. I said, well, God, what else can we do? Um, you know, if, if you don't mind people hating you and rolling their eyes at you every now and then or thinking you're a loon, just, you know, you know you're the, you know you're in the right. And us women, you know when we're right, we know we're right. And we're going to get something done. Sorry, guys. Just how it is. Um, so, anyway, without rambling on for too long, we ended up with the state legislator, state capital, um, every school in Washoe County, um, uh, one of the largest hospitals in northern Nevada, as well as a number of other government agencies going pesticide free inside their buildings and the grounds. So, you know, my intention is to reduce the amount of toxic <coughs> chemicals that we're all exposed to, especially our children and their children. Um, last week I was at a networking event trying to get a large museum to go pesticide free and a, a lady walked up to me she said, I've seen the work that you guys have done and we're looking for executive director, do you think that you could help us? I'm kind of busy, but we'll see. And well, she made me an offer I couldn't refuse and that's how I ended up uh, last week starting a new job for Helabima World. So please forgive me if I stumble a little bit. It's new for me. Um, but I believe in the mission. So let me get started. And if you have a question, just raise your hand. And if I don't know the answer, I'll find it for you. We'll figure it out. Or maybe somebody in the audience. <coughs> so the name of the project that I'm the new executive director for is Hellabima Rice Project. Hellabima means land of light. Um, Hellabima is a, a little island 
off of the coast of India called Sri Lanka. You, has anyone ever had the love of visiting Sri Lanka? Yeah, in the back? Gorgeous place, huh? Um, so, let me get started here. So, who are we? Dr. Abby, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. I'm from the South, I know I'll mess it up. But he is a 31st generation Ayurvedic doctor. <coughs> Um, so this man is just a real go-getter, amazing energy. He has um, started a number of movements that um, have helped people from all over the world. Um, his primary focus is to work with farmers in Sri Lanka and teach them how to manage their crops organically without the use of synthetic fertilizers or toxic pesticides. He also has a little twist <laughs> to uh, what us Westerners like to say, organic land care. He also teaches um, Ayurvedic practices to help them manage and connect with the land. So, um, and that's something that I'm learning about. Last week was my first meditation and mantra class, and it was amazing. I'm from the South. Um, we focus on practical things. If it works, we do it, right? <laughs> so we, most of us. Um, so, when they came to said, Sandy, we're going to have you chant these mantras, mantras, and it's going to help your soil become healthy. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> it's flipping working. I, you know, I'm amazed. I can't explain it. Um, all I can do is just say, yeah, it's working for us, and hopefully it'll work for you too. So, this lady over here in the corner is Dr. Abby's mom. She's a sweetheart. Currently, we have, the numbers have grown since I you know, put this together, we have over 500 farmers in our organic co-op in Sri Lanka. That's amazing. I don't know if you are familiar with the story, I really don't want to focus on negative stuff, especially with young people in the audience. Um, but in India, Sri Lanka, each other, Monsanto is in full force over there. And what they do is, they go in there, and they give them these loans, right? And they give them all these magical chemicals and seeds to use. And when it doesn't work, when it kills the health of their soil and everything is dying, um, they, they can't produce. So they lose, they lose the farm. They lose their land. So instead of giving that land to Monsanto, the government, they commit suicide. And the reason why they do this is so the land stays in the family. Okay, I'm nervous and I'm gonna cry. It's all <laughs> emotional. Let's all cry. <laughs> it makes me so mad. I can only see straight. So what Dr. Abby is doing, he's going to these families and saying, "Look, we can help you." Whenever you've been managing a piece of property with systemic pesticides, organic pesticides—that's another long story—or synthetic fertilizers, you're killing the microorganisms in the soil. So it's not soil anymore; it's a dirt. All right, they say, God made dirt, dirt don't hurt, no. She made soil, <laughs> and soil doesn't hurt, it heals. So he goes out to these remote areas, and he trains these farmers, and he teaches them how to grow, how to restore the health of their soil again. It could take one to five years, depending on how many chemicals they've used. Um, I think it's a great and noble thing. Um, he also has a healing center for the terminally ill. Um, a lot of uh, the patients are ca uh, cancer patients, and a number of them have been healed. This is something that I can tell you, but unless you know somebody or experience it, you can think of a snake oil salesman up here. It's pretty amazing stuff. Um, he has schools for the farmers, for children. So, um, and he does all of this for free. So, um, and in the U.S., this is why they brought me on, um, we're working on a pollinator sanctuary, which that something's very close to my heart. And, you know, this organization is gracious enough to allow me to figure out a creative way to tie farmers in Sri Lanka to pollinator sanctuaries in the U.S. and still working on it, so bear with me. If you have any ideas, please see me after this. So, um, these farmers are growing 2,000-year-old ancient grains of rice. And I know there's a lot of controversy over rice now, where it's um, a bioaccumulator, meaning it takes heavy metals and soil, <coughs> It might be just a little bit in the soil, but once it gets up into the plant, it intensifies it, and then you eat that, and you're damaging your own immune system. Um, so this rice has been tested, no arsenic, 
no heavy metal, uh, uh, metal, excuse me. <laughs> um, and that's something that I can provide to you later if you want. So how do farmers in Sri Lanka help bees in the U.S.? I'm sure all of y'all have heard of the word pesticide drift. Anybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm reaching the choir. Um, so pesticides, and they could be herbicides, insecticides, the whole, anything with a C-I-D-E-S on it. Um, some of them last for years on the surfaces, right? So you've got somebody over here that's ignorant spraying these pesticides. Um, it gets in the soil, the water, they, um, it lands on you know, the car or your shirt or your shoes. You track that back into your house and it's in your house for two years. When you're out there spraying Roundup or whatever it is, all of those pesticides that you inhale, right? You can go back in your house and you'll exhale these pesticides, right? You can absorb it through your eyes. I'm going to stop. But, um, so by, you know, the statement of we're all connected, we really, really are. Um, in, in literal, spiritual, <laughs> physical, um, everything that happens in Asia happens in Tennessee, happens in Chicago, right? So, um, you know, you guys remember when there was a, a forest fire in, uh, somewhere over in Russia, and then, you know, it was coming down over in Nevada and California, it's not only from Russia, right? So, um, by working with farmers in other third world countries, we reduce that toxic, uh, toxic pesticide loads for our own communities, right? So we all, we all accumulate these pesticides in our system. So all the pesticides that you and I are exposed to, when we have children, we pass them down to our children. That's a fact. Um, all the damage that's done to our DNA from pesticides are passed on to our children. Um, so. If, if we get a farmer in flipping Timbuktu and they'll listen to us, if we're going out there, we're going to help them because uh, it affects everyone. Okay. Pesticide Action Network is a good nonprofit to learn more about um, pesticides. I don't know. All right, so I'm, I'm going to try and get through the hard stuff and focus on anything positive here because there's lots of positive stuff. You guys all being here in this room is pretty dark on positive. Um, so when we think about pesticides, these are usually the culprits that we think about, we have nightmares about, right? Big ag, uh, farmers, creating dead zones. But who else is harming the bees? Well-meaning people. You say, how are they doing that? All right? Every plant, seed, bulb, tree, shrub that you buy that's not certified USDA organic, I promise you on my heart, it's been treated with neonicotinoids. So, Friends of the Earth is another nonprofit that I follow that has done a lot of really good work in regards with, you know, teaching people how to protect the environment. They went out and did a study. They went to garden shops, big and small, Home Depot, down to your local garden shop. And they went and bought plants. And they tested them. <laughs> what was it? Close to 60% of all the plants they tested, tested positive for neonicotinoids. Positive. So you'll have these garden shops. And I, I used to be a florist, you know, I, I kind of understand where they're coming from, but you get to a point, you're like, well, you know, we can't eat money, right? Um, so even though the grower, even if they buy from Oregon and they're not using systemic pesticides, the garden shops will treat their plants with pe uh, these pesticides to protect their, their investment. Um, one garden shop that I called, and since we're not green, I'll tell you who it is, uh, Moana Nursery, <laughs> we know them at a, um, they got fined by the Department of Agriculture for spraying fruit trees with neonicotinoids um, and then listing that they were organic, right? They got a serious fine. And that takes a lot to get the Department of Agriculture to do anything. Um, anyway, so I called them and I said, you know what? How, you know, I want to buy a bunch of trees for my yard. How can you um, get the best plants for me? I don't want to have holes in the leaves. I want to be beautiful, right? And the girl on the phone, she says, oh, no, we're... We spray every week with neonics. We're covered. I 
couldn't believe it. I was like, you admitted that you sprayed her. Neonic, let me explain what neonics, just in case there might be somebody here that doesn't know. So neonicotinoids, or neonics for short, whenever you treat a seed or a plant with this pesticide, the plant becomes the pesticide. 24-7, it's emitting a pesticide. So it doesn't turn off, and you can't turn it off either. It takes five years for this to get out of the plant system. And some of the neonicotinoids, when they degrade, they turn into another class of neonicotinoids that last 13 years. This is all scientific information that you can find on EPA, USDA, whatever. And we'll have them on the website if you want to look it up. Some light reading. Anywho, so, you know, the one thing that I've been <laughs> preaching for a few years now is when you buy anything, right? Especially if you're trying to plant forage for your girls and your guys, it's got to be certified USDA organic. It has to be. You think, God, that's going to be so much more money than what I'm used to spending. You think, well, how much money is it costing you replacing your hive or losing your business? So spend a few little extra more dollars now um, to, to help give the bees a fighting chance. So what's killing the bees? You already know this. Loss of habitat, poor beekeeping uh, practices, pesticides, environmental conditions. Sick bees, just like sick humans, attract diseases, right? If you walked around with a gaping hole in your stomach, you didn't get it fixed, you're going to get an infection. Same thing with our bees. Okay. I remember um, I uh, had called um, Nevada Department of Agriculture, and I wanted to get a public information request of all the pesticides that they use to manage all of their properties. And the secretary, she I got the email, should have brought it. I can send it to you if you want to see it. It's funny. It's scary, but funny. But anyway, she says, oh, we don't use pesticides. We just use Roundup. That's the part of agriculture. I was like, oh, Lord. You know, don't want to get your blood boiling. Yeah. Oh, goodness. So I'm not going to go into that. That's too depressing. But at least now we know what we can do, right? We can, what? What do you do? You buy certified organic, not because, you know, that campaign, Know Your Farmer. I was married to this guy for 17 years and thought I knew him, and I didn't. Trust me. You, you know, it, <laughs> that slogan drives me up the wall. You want to make sure that cute little, like, she's wearing that symbol, USDA green logo. And, I, you know, I have a love-hate relationship with the government right now. I'm proud to be an American, but, hmm, God, what are they doing? But the USDA program is the best thing that we got right now to keep people honest. Okay. So, what are some of the products that have pesticides on them that you have no clue? Conventional compost. You know those bags of compost that you buy? Bio sludge, you know, from hospitals, prisons, God knows where else. That's what you're using. Uh, soil. You buy bags of soil. Hay. Do you know how farmers harvest hay now to make a little extra money? With Roundup. Instead of just taking the tractor, they kill it with Roundup. So you're taking this hay, putting it in your hive, and it has Roundup on it. So it has to be certified organic. You know, okay. Seeds, wood chips. So people buy wood chips to keep down the weeds. They're treated with herbicides. Who knew? Uh, plants, turf, uh, let's see here. Anyway, we already know all this stuff. Go on. Yeah, you know, driving down the road, um, the highway, onto my community that I used to live in, it was beautiful. It's a well-to-do na well neighborhood, flowers, trees. Oh, there's plenty of food here for the bees. And then there's this guy in a suit, you know, walking around spraying stuff. And then, you know, all of these plants are treated with neonic. So it's gorgeous, but it's a, it's a death trap. How can you help? Encourage weeds, right? Y'all didn't hear me say that, but weeds are good. They're good for you. Um, anytime you have a weed in an area, it's, you know what it's doing? It's trying to repair your soil and fix it for you. That just tells you there's a problem. It just tells you there's compaction or there was some kind of construction work, or there was a pesticide sprayed there, or it's missing some kind of nutrient on the surface that the plants around it need. Plants are amazing. I'm, I'm in a class with Dr. Elaine Ingham. Anybody know who she is? Yes. 
Dr. Elaine Ingham, soil scientist, goddess extraordinaire. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm a student. So I learned that in your yard, so you have an acre, you have trees, bushes, flowers, blah, 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 grass. All of those plants are connected underground by mycelium, <coughs> is that it? Mycorrhiza, fungi. Yep. So if one plant is like, man, I am so needing some calcium right now. <laughs> <laughs> All I have to do is hop on the phone and say, little tree over there, can you send me a little extra something? That tree will send that plant calcium. It's fascinating stuff. All right, I'm going to try not to geek out. But, you know, allow weeds in your yard. If you can get away with it, put it in the backyard so your neighbors don't complain. Um, but they're, they're the good guys. Weeds are the good guys. Um, hedgerows. Uh, have water for your bees. I was going to show a beautiful video from Jacqueline Freeman. She was a lady that was going to talk. I think Susan is filling in for her. I love Jacqueline. She's my hero. Um, she takes a bird bath and she puts, can you, do you know about the bird bath? What she puts oh, in yeah. it? Yeah, she has little bird baths all over her property and some of her <laughs> ponds. And, and she just fills them with crystals and lovely stones and, and Moss. mosses and, and, and wood. And just goes around and keeps watering them all. Those are her little bee watering places. And she said it's like creating little tiny altars everywhere. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a great idea. His bees, you know, um, my fiance, God bless his heart, he has two of the craziest dogs on the planet. But um, the boxers, please don't hate me, but I tell you, every time they come up to me, I get bruises all over me. But anyway, long story short, um, we have these huge ice cream buckets full of water for them, right? And Oh, there, and there's a the dead bee in it, another dead bee. I was like, oh, we got to fix that. So we put up the bird baths, and they're beautiful. So the bees are now in the front yard. And it's so adorable. Anyway, I'm going to get off of that, but that's a good idea that you might want to look up. Um, Bioorganic, right? I just told you seeds, plants, bulbs, trees, whatever. It has to. It's critical. It is crucial that they're certified organic. But what about our food? What are we eating? All right? And I am so guilty. I don't know. I'm tired. I'm like, look, we're going to go out for sushi or something. I'm not cooking. <laughs> I'm tired. But when you go out to eat, even if it's a fancy restaurant, you're eating GMO. You're helping that system. right? Junk food is the worst. Absolute worst. Um, so vote with your wallet. You know, It's good for your health. Cut back off the junk food. Um, and you're helping the planet. We're all acting like we have another planet to go to. We don't. This is it. All right? Um, start a phone tree. Has anyone ever done a phone tree? Do you, are you familiar with them? What? A phone tree? Phone tree. Phone tree. There's going to be a test after here. I don't know if y'all are going to pass. So a phone tree. Get your phone. You pick three people that you love and care for and you tell them, hey, did you know that every plant that you buy that's not certified or organic has been treated with pesticides that's killing my bees? Can you please help me? You call one of your friends and neighbors and tell them to do the same. That's a phone tree, right? Unless you have a lot of money and you want to pay, you know, thousands of dollars on a social media campaign. You know, I don't have that. But a phone, I can call people and tell them, hey, now can you do that? You know, please help me. People love beekeepers. They love you. You just say, hey, my girls are struggling. This is why. And this is something we can actually do to fix it. So do a, a phone tree. I have a suggestion. Yes. I don't know. I mean, probably everybody in here has already thought to do this, but most people have some form of investments. And unless you have actively called your investment advisor and said, get my butt out of Monsanto Bear and now, you are invested in it. And so it's, uh, you don't have to be anal about it, you don't have to chase it down the rabbit hole. But do call your financial advisors or look at the firms that your uh, <coughs> stocks are invested in. And if you're in those companies, the best. Exactly. Did everyone hear that? Don't want Sonto. If you're invested in it, like I said, you can't eat money. we got 150 years, according to scientists. Look at the sixth mass extinction. Now's the time to get off your butt and do something. If you're shy, get over yourself. Get, I, am, I used to stutter. And I'm up here, so <laughs> I was crying earlier. You know, I'm a nervous wreck, but it doesn't matter. Our intention is we gotta save the planet. We've gotta do something. This isn't some hippie yuppie thing off. Oh, you know. no, this is real. 
this is real, this is really happening. And you either get up and do something or you go cry and we don't want to hear you whine about nothing because you didn't do anything. So it's important. You've got to make your voice heard. You've got to get out there. you got to be, uh, you got to fight. you got to do something. So in Italy, a group of people, they got together. They said enough of this malarkey. And they banned the unnicotinoids. noise. And two years later, it went from 37.5% losses down to 15%. That's pretty impressive. I think that's wonderful. So how do you do it? You call your local garden shops. You harass them. You go to Star Schmucks or Starbucks. You say, is this organic? I'm like, no. Is this GMO? GMO is how to save money so we can help farmers in third world countries. They go, really? I've heard how you help farmers in third world countries. I don't want your Starbucks anymore. So, you know, it's part of your life. It's your religion, right? Um, okay, so the EPA is taking public comments on different classes of, or excuse me, on different brands of neonicotinoids coming up until, was it March 15th? So just Google that. Neonicotinoids, EPA comments. And make your voice heard, leave your comment, all right? Be active, get up and do something. Don't stay home and get depressed, right? And I'm so depressed learning about this stuff. Like, what, what can I do? It's for real, right? You know, educate your community. Call your local and national politicians until they say, oh, it's Sandy again. Yes, we know, we know, stop calling. Seriously, be a jerk. Um, start a pesticide free park. Um, heal yourself. So, m most of Dr. Abby's work. His belief is, you know, these 31 generations of Ayurvedic healer, you know, got something on me. Um, but he believes that if, if we're healthy <coughs> mentally, physically, spiritually, we're going to make better decisions um, for our children, for our community. Um, we're going to be stronger, um, you know, uh, people to follow through on this big mission that we have. Uh, walk in nature, meditation, quiet time, share any good news you, that you can find related to what we're working on. Have a garden party. Um, sponsor a local par uh, pollinator event. Put your money where your mouth is. It's important. Vote with your wallet. These are some of our volunteers. This is Dr. Abby here in the middle. Oh, um, is it doing something is better than staying at home and being sad about it. Get out and do something. All right. Is it changing? Okay. All, all life on Earth has a purpose. I don't care if it's cockroach, a spider. Get a cup, scoop it up, put it outside. We need all that biodiversity we can get. Yeah. Japanese doctors have started prescribing forest walks for people, and it's actually called forest bathing. Mm -hmm. Forest what? Say it again. Forest bathing. That's nice. And it is actually um, reducing pain, um, medication needs in some people, and it is just really helping with stress relief. Oh, God, yeah. So if it helps us, just imagine what it does for everybody else. Okay, right. We are nature, right? 90% of our body is, anybody know? Wow. And what else is it? Only 10% of our body is what scientists call human. What's the rest of it? Bacteria. Yeah, there we go. We are nature, right? We are Mother Earth. No matter what your belief system is, it's a fact. So, you know, 95% of the bugs that you have in your yard, they're the good guys. And the other 5%, it's hard for you to tell if they're good guys or not. So just just like, you know, Michael said, just, just don't do anything. Leave it alone. You know, aphids are an important part in um, honeydew, right? Does anyone know how that works? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then I won't go there. <laughs> Such no calls. That's a tomato hornworm. Yeah, I like them. I think they're adorable. I spent a couple of years in the U.S. growing those things. Because those are six months. Yeah, they're adorable. Yeah, yeah. 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 Grow? Yes, they are. Everything. Yes, you're right. Somebody says. One has thousands of them. Okay, uh, grow year round. Call your local uh, uh, native plant nursery and say, help me out here. What can I be growing year round? All right? Is anyone using your local 
I don't know how it is in every state. So in our state, we have a Washington County nursery. Most native plants, most native nurseries are neonicotinoid free. Because they're thinking is, it's a native plant, it's not going to attract pests, it's not going to have a problem, it's already acclimated to the environment, it doesn't need pesticides. Nothing needs pesticides, but whatever, that's the thinking. Um, you still want to call and say, hey, is this really neonicotinoid free? Can you get that in writing? Can I have that in writing? Again, just because this is natural or earth friendly in the bag doesn't mean anything. It has to say USDA organic. All right, real quick. Um, I, uh, has anyone uh, done any work with native pollinators like mason bees, like cutter bees? Yeah. Really? I built a thing for them to live in. You did? So, oh. You can't see my next screen? Just Sorry. a big block with drill, uh, 516 holes through it. Like this? Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. That's there, I wouldn't have that much time. But. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of help with that one. So um, I won a grant, and it's 4500 bucks, and we donate it to um, Galena Visitor Center. They do the Great Basin natural, uh, Naturals Camps for kids. And so we put in Reno's first two pesticide-free pollinator parks. His other pollinator parks use pesticides. So, <laughs> anyway, um, so <laughs> being an army brat, lived all over the world, living in Europe, and I would see these insect hotels. Like, oh, it's so cool. So we used the money to build this huge, huge insect hotel. We also uh, created K-12 curriculum to teach every student in Washoe County how to protect pollinators. Um, so this is the first bee hotel that we put together. And uh, as you can see, <laughs> It's missing, was it chicken wire or some kind of wire? It's supposed to be at the front. So the only pollinators we have in there are chipmunks. So we're hoping, <laughs> we're, we're hoping to have some real insects. So uh, that's on my to-do list, like in a couple of weeks, and it warms up. Um, but I, there's this company. Has anyone heard of Crown Bees? No? Oh, wow. This is one thing. Okay. Well, they sell mason bees. Northern Mason bees or Southern Mason bees, depending on where you live. And these little pollinators, I know there's no honey, <laughs> um, but uh, what they do is they're really good pollinators, right? So you can buy the little tubes, put them in here, and then whatever they hatch, you'll have them for about six weeks. And they only travel like 250 meters or so. Or, God, did I get that mixed up? I probably did. I didn't do good with math, I'm sorry, in school. Um, but anyway, it's not that far versus, what, three to five miles for honeybees. So you can at least control their environment and know that, that it's healthy. Anyway. Uh, I put up a pollinator hotel in my yard last year. Oh, you did? And I still did. I, I just uh, put up um, an old uh, kitchen cabinet with the front off. It's a good so idea. I set it in and I set it up along the back, set south facing wall. I've got some bamboo in my yard, so I cut it up and just tied it together. Those